Tens of thousands of students had substandard university experiences last year and are continuing to do so. If you were one, can you get a refund? I'm Daniel Barnett, a practicing barrister and the presenter of the LBC Legal Hour. Please subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell for new Legal Explainer videos. And if you've got a question for me, I show here how to ask it so that I might make a video for you answering it. There'll be a link right at the end as well. Students are in a contract with their university. So like any consumer or party to a contract where there is an expectation that services and products will be delivered as promised to a required standard, a student can bring a private claim for breach of contract against their university for the failure to meet a performance obligation. There's a case called Clarken University of Lincolnshire and Humberside. All the links to the cases I mentioned are in the show notes below. But it can be tricky establishing the precise terms of a student contract because it's not in a single document. The terms are found all over the place. They'll be in any agreement signed with your university, any statements in the student prospectus or handbook where certain standards of teaching and learning are promised, especially if those statements indicate that the services provided won't be affected by COVID. Are there any force majeure clauses that exclude the university from liability for events outside its control? Bear in mind these clauses are unenforceable if they're unfair or where they are too broad in scope. Now, if you think your university has failed to deliver to the required standard because of COVID, you just might, just might have a claim in misrepresentation, i.e. that the university has made a false statement of fact that induced you to enter into a contract with it. That's a case called Avon. You'd need to show the university had made the statement, the full statement, deliberately or negligently. Now, that's not going to be easy if the university made the statement before COVID restrictions kicked in, but there could be a claim in the county court where a service was promised during the pandemic and the university should have known that delivery of that service was unrealistic. Now, in terms of the standard of teaching provided, the courts will normally defer to the academic judgment of the university and your university will rely on the fact that they were following government advice. So any claim you may make for damages or reduction in fees will have to be clear on how the alternative tuition provided failed to deliver the same learning objectives. Now, this is going to be easier for students enrolled in practical courses such as medicine or engineering which normally involve site-specific work but difficult for students whose courses can kind of be delivered by online learning if you're a law student watching this that's you a claim of educational negligence is unlikely to succeed unless an education provider has obviously been negligent now the question of whether universities have failed in their pastoral duty of care for students during covid hasn't yet been tested in the courts a test case might require evidence that grades for the covid year were lower than in previous or subsequent years as compared with other providers or evidence that teaching staff were substantially unavailable. Now, universities are very keen to maintain their reputations and will want to avoid allegations of negligence or substandard teaching. So where you do have a decent claim, there's a fair chance the university will want to settle it on confidential terms. Now, of course, the opposite also applies. If you don't really have much of a claim, the university will defend its position loudly, publicly, and by throwing money at lawyers because they want to prevent copycat claims where others jump on the bandwagon. The education provider's duty of care also means that although there is no legal requirement for them to do so, halls of residence are likely to consider some refunds for rent, especially since the Prime Minister announced in January 2021 that the UK government will try to make sure students are being treated fairly on that count. You'll need to check with your provider whether you can claim a refund off a future bill. If your university refuses a refund, you should check the tenancy agreement for get out clauses or entitlement to a rent rebate or discount for any time not spent in the accommodation. Where you've not been able to access your accommodation at all, you could argue frustration of the rental contract because the Competition and Markets Authority applies consumer protection laws to higher education providers. But frustration is difficult to argue where accommodation was provided and you decided not to take it. University policies are in flux as we speak, so it's worth speaking with your student union to understand what kind of lobbying they are carrying out on behalf of students. 
Another good starting point is the website of the Office of the Independent Adjudicator, the OIA, where information is available about what to do if you're not satisfied with your services from your education provider. Again, I'll include the link in the show notes below. Many students who've been upset with the way their university handled the COVID situation have already submitted complaints to the OIA. And in at least one case, an institution was ordered to pay a thousand pounds to an international student for failing to mitigate against disruption to their study. That was because 60% of the student's course module was cancelled. Now, a complaint to the OIA will only be considered if the student has exhausted their university's own internal complaint procedure, and you must complain within 12 months of the decision being challenged. The OIA scheme, its rules 4171, gives students the right to bring a complaint about any decision their education provider has made. And the OIA makes it clear that if your provider has offered you different but broadly equivalent teaching and assessment opportunities in a way that you could access, it is not likely that you will get a fee refund for that. It's in the green box, will I get my tuition fees back if you're looking for it on the OIA website. Again, link below. So the OIA is unlikely to consider the decision to move learning online to be a failure by the provider. This doesn't apply if you have difficulties accessing resources or if you're negatively impacted by an adjusted teaching method because of a disability, which is a protected characteristic under the Equality Act 2010. In that situation, there are grounds for a discrimination complaint if your university has failed to make reasonable adjustments. Any decision of either the OIA or the education provider can be challenged in the courts through a process called judicial review. But this is a high risk type of claim and creates a serious costs risk for you because the losing party, the losing side, has to pay the legal costs of the other side. You should therefore lodge a complaint in normal circumstances with the OIA before considering judicial review proceedings and be aware that where a complaint has already been submitted to the OIA, the court would be reluctant to engage with issues arising out of the same subject matter. There are very strict time limits for judicial review. You've got to issue your claim in the court promptly and in any event, no more than three months after the grounds to make the claim first arose. Now, if you're thinking about filing a complaint, write to your university clearly stating the complaint and the reasons why your fees or rent should be refunded or rebated in part. If you want to cover all legal eventualities, note in your letter the potential need for judicial review. Once the university's internal procedures are completed, your university should issue you a completion of procedures letter, which gives details of its decision and gives the deadline for bringing a complaint to the OIA. The OIA website has a can you complain to us section, link below, explaining which education providers are covered by their scheme and what kind of complaints the OIA can or cannot consider. Thanks so much for watching. Pop any questions you've got below. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so and click the notification bell. If you'd like me to make a video just for you on a legal topic I haven't covered, have a look here. Here's a video I think you might like, and here's a few other videos explaining consumer law. I'm Barrister Daniel Barnett. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.